What's up everybody? Silas back again today. It's actually about mid-afternoon now. I had a bunch of other stuff going on this morning. I'm out here now. They're getting ready to come out tomorrow morning and start live loading these bundles back here behind me. Um, they're coming to get two loads in the morning that I know of, so I've got to make sure I have two loads ready to go, which I almost have two loads ready to go. I need to crush just a few more bundles real quick. As many of you probably know by now, prices have gone up a ton this month. They're probably going to go up more next month, but they're up a bunch right now. So I've got a bunch of vehicles that I was trying to save and I was trying to sell stuff off of that nothing's been selling and the vehicles haven't been selling, so they're going to go away. If you're squeamish and you don't like seeing cool stuff get crushed, this probably isn't the video for you. I've got these two here, this Ford truck and this old Ranchero. Both of them have 9-inch Fords under them, but I'm just going to go ahead and crush both of those today. I've got this old Bronco rolled over on its side now. I'm going to cut the catalytic converters off of it, and then it's going to go in the crusher. And then assuming he shows up, there's a guy supposed to be bringing me a couple older vehicles. I don't know what they are exactly. Didn't specify what they were. He just said an old uh, Bronco and an old car. So I guess we'll find out what those are, but he said he knocked the windows out and stuffed them full of iron. So I'm sure there's going to be crushers. But enough talking. Let's get to work. Well, the back one was empty, but the front one was full, so that's 200 and some dollars. Like this Bronco here, people always say, why don't you save that and sell that? Well, it had a, I believe, a blown head gasket on it, so the motor was no good. And I would have probably sold that truck for, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars if somebody wanted it. But now, with the way prices are, it will bring more than, it'll, well, actually, that's right at what it'll bring since that one converter was empty. It's probably around eight hundred dollars or so, maybe nine hundred. I don't know how heavy it is exactly. And at that price there, I don't have to do a tire kickers. I don't have to meet people. I don't have to send people 50 pictures for them to never message me back again. I don't have to do anything other than stick it in there and push a button. So that's the bad thing and the good thing about prices going up. It's great for me because I don't have to mess with selling stuff like this anymore, but it's bad for everybody that wanted to buy stuff like this. I did some research on this thing here. And before I start crushing, I'm gonna go ahead and have the tire shop come out and they're gonna use their big truck to pull these lug nuts off since I don't have the right tools to do it. It's got those square deals on the back and it's got great big lug nuts. But these wheels here will actually fit right on a lot of the older trucks. That's kind of what I was thinking when I recorded this thing in my previous vlog when we first got it. But that is what's going on with them. Like your big W500s and your big uh, Dodge four wheel drive trucks out of the 60s, these will fit right on there. And I buy a lot of old Dodges, so they might be handy to have for that. Or a lot of your old Ford and International two ton trucks. All that sort of stuff is this bolt pattern. So they're really handy to have around, so I'm going to go ahead and keep them. There we go, much better. There was one lug nut did not want to cooperate on the front. I don't know who torqued that thing down, but it was way over torqued, but we got it off of there. And here they are. Looks like four of the tires are actually really nice. The front tires are here. They're in really good condition still. Two of the back tires on one side were really nice. And there was two over here that are getting kind of bald. I don't know if those would pass DOT. They're not quite on the rub strips yet, but they're probably within 5,000 miles of the rub strips. So I wouldn't recommend using those tires. But hopefully I can find a new home for these. I don't foresee ever actually needing them for myself, but I'd love to find a home for them. Okay, that guy showed up with those two old things he had, and when he said Bronco, I guess he meant small Bronco. It's just junk. I mean, there's some parts on these that sell okay. Some of the dash parts sell, but I just don't have time for it right now. Like you said, the windows are all knocked out of it, stuffed full of junk. Kind of a shame, a little rust-free thing. A little tiny, tiny bit of bubble rust here on the rear wheel. 
other than that, no rust at all in it. It's going to get the crunch. And then the other thing is, what is this, an LTD? He had a rust-free LTD. The Derby guys claim that these are worth big money, but man, I've got two of them out at my place that I've been asking 800 bucks a piece for, and now the price went up, I'm just going to go ahead and crush them. Every time I tell somebody $800, either they tell me I'm crazy or they never message me back. So I'm not sure. I guess they want me to lose money on them. I don't think people realize just how much we get paid for high volume material. This is kind of interesting here. I noticed this when you brought the car in. This car was completely underwater. Check that out. That was flowing water where this car was sitting evidently. He said they were out by a creek. So that's kind of neat. So this car, yeah, look at that. Look inside this car. It's got mud on the seats where it was completely underwater. That's crazy. Got some sort of old moped or something up here on the front of it. That's kind of neat. I don't really know what that is. It's not a moped. It doesn't have pedals. So it must be some sort of little motorbike. I don't know. What is it? It's got an old style pan seat on it. That looks kind of old now that I look at it closer. I thought it was just junk, but that's kind of cool. It's got these wide rims on it. I don't see any names on it. So I'm not sure. What does the tire say? BF Goodrich? So that's got to be pretty old. BF Goodrich tires? The front tire says something on it. I'll hop up there and see. It says New Orleans. What's that say? Simplex Manufacturing Corporation. Simplex Manufacturing Corporation. Service Cycle. Huh. I wonder if that's the brand of the thing. That could be. 26 inch wheels. I don't know. I'm going to have to do some research on that. I'm going to turn the camera off and get it down real quick. That thing's pretty cool now that I look at it. I think is this one here. Yeah, this one here turns. So this must have been like a throttle or something. Can't tell this side doesn't turn. At first I thought it was a leather seat, but that's just foam padding. There's no gear on it, though, is the weird part. There's no gear on the rear wheel. So I don't know how it worked. It's got a springer fork on the front of it. It's got two deals on the gas tank. That's kind of unusual. I don't know what that's all about. It's got a spring on the seat. Must have had the motor right there. And it doesn't look like it's all hodgepodge welded, so that must be factory. But just based off of what I know off of bicycles, the way bicycle tires work, this, if it was bicycle tires that looked kind of like this with a BF Goodrich, I would say it was probably out of the 40s, maybe 50s. Yeah, probably 50s. So I don't know if this is that old or not. But judging by the tires, it may be. I did some research on it, and this is a Simplex service cycle. That's what this is. And I'm not entirely sure on the exact year of it. I guess they made these from the 30s all the way up through the 70s. Although the newer ones were quite a bit different. I'm thinking this one here is probably out of the mid-50s. They said they started putting these twin gas caps in around 1953 or 54. It's missing the fenders, and it's missing the way it works instead of a gear is it had a little deal that went up in here and it ran off of a, a belt drive or something like that to the engine and it would turn this and it would turn the wheel that's all gone the engine's gone obviously the fenders are gone it's missing some parts the headlights gone so it, it's missing quite a bit but there's still quite a bit here it's got the original wheels it's got the original frame that hasn't been hacked apart it's got the original seat and handlebars so it's got a lot going for it that's just kind of crazy. You just literally never know what's going to come in out of the junkyard. But enough of that. I'll worry about it later. Right now I need to get back to crushing. I've just got a little bit of time left and I still have to crush two more bundles. I don't know if there's any catalytic converters on these two, so I'm going to look underneath them and check that out. That's pretty cool. Both of these had catalytic converters on them. This one had two and the Bronco had two. The ones that were on this though were just old antique ones. They're not worth very much. The ones on the Bronco are worth about $150 a piece 
and they're both full, which is kind of shocking because a lot of times those Broncos and Rangers are empty. All right, it's getting pretty late now. I had a bunch of people bring some cars in, some trucks in, some catalytic converters, a bunch of stuff happened, so I never got anything else crushed. But tomorrow morning I'll start crushing again, and the trailer should be here pretty early, so I can ship out one load of cars, and they've got to haul that. It's going to take them probably, probably two and a half to three hours to get back, I'm guessing, so that'll give me plenty of time to get the next load finished up. I only have to crush four or five cars, so it won't take too long. And we are back. The truck should be here any minute, so let's get to work. There's the first load. I didn't realize they are going to be bringing the long trailers, so I crushed these bundles kind of long because I was thinking they were going to bring their normal short trailers. I can't fit three bundles in those lengthwise. This one here, I can fit three bundles in, so in the future I'll crush them a little bit different, but for now I'll just keep crushing them like this. But they're headed out. They'll be back here in a little bit, and we'll get the next load sent out. We're for sure going to do two loads today, maybe three depending on how the day goes, but probably just two. Also today, I got a guy coming to get this tractor. He's one of my subscribers on YouTube. He saw it in one of my videos and decided he needed it. There's not a whole lot wrong with this thing the way I take it. it just needs new uh, new points in the distributor and you gotta take the whole thing apart on the front end to get those out. Which I know that's not a real big deal, but with that bucket on there, the guy just didn't wanna mess with it. So he sold the tractor for scrap. That happens a lot around here because around here, the stuff just isn't that expensive for that rare. So they're better off just buying something different if they don't feel like messing with it. But it's really not a bad looking little tractor. So I'm glad to see it going to a new home because I was just gonna crush it.
my drain bin was getting pretty full, so I'm draining it out into the big tub now. What I do is, is I open that valve up wide and I take a bucket and I put it up on top of this, that way it, it shoots out of that into the bucket and that way it doesn't splash all over the place because if you don't do that, it will splash all over the place. So you do that and then it drains back out of the bucket into here and then I let it fill up and then I stop and let it drain out. It takes a little bit of time, but it's better than getting fined by the EPA. I haven't been recording a whole lot for the last, I don't know, hour or so. I've just been getting cars ready. Got quite a few ready though. I don't know if I'll have time to do any more crushing today. Uh, the show in Texas is coming up really, really soon. Like it's right around the corner. I didn't realize it was that close. It's like a week away. <laughs> so I've got to get a bunch of noses chopped off some old trucks and old cars. So I'm going to go out there this afternoon and take some pictures of stuff and try to sell some down there before I chop them off. Well, that was a good one. When I went to shut the valve off, there was a leaf stuck in it. And when I went to shut it, it sprayed fluid, oil, and tranny fluid sideways. And I don't know if you can see it, but it completely soaked the front of me. So I stink like oil and gas now. <laughs> oh, well, it is what it is. Man, that feels good. I got all sorts of room in here now, especially if I get this truck out of here. I don't know what's wrong with that company I was gonna sell that to. They're dragging their feet bad. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is the company that just hauled those dumpsters out of here, they've got a flatbed trailer as well. So if I can talk them into bringing the flatbed, I can set this and that GMC forward cab and probably a bundle of cars up on the back of that forward cab on the frame. And so that'll be a good load for over there. I made it out here to my place and it looks like you got that one welded up pretty good. That'll be really handy for when I'm cutting the calves off these old trucks and stuff like that. I can put them up on that so it's just a lot easier to get underneath them. And then I've got these other ones over here that when he has time he's going to weld those up and I'll take those to the yard. That way I can put the cars up on top of those for cutting converters and wheels and draining fluids and that sort of stuff. But I'm out here now taking pictures. I'm figuring out which noses we're going to cut off next week. I'm thinking this green Dodge right here, we're going to get the nose cut off of it. Probably the yellow school bus and then I'm gonna go up back with all those other old trucks and start taking pictures and putting prices on them And sending them to my regular buyer and see which one she wants to buy. I'm positive she'll want this one here And that one looking at us right there She always buys those from me That one behind me is gonna need a little bit of work, but this one here isn't too bad My really old stuff. I'm not gonna chop up just yet. I might soon but like that 39 International I'm not quite ready to chop it up and that old 40 Ford or 41, whatever that is there, I'm not quite ready to chop it up. But that old jail bar Ford back there beside this blue International, it might get the chop. The International is sold, so it's safe. I've got these two Internationals back here. She's not too big on that style. Though. She might buy the brown one, but it's not really a good color. And then the green one has a mismatched hood, which kind of ruins it. So I don't think she's going to want those, but if I drop the price, she might. I've got this little truck here. I think if I can find headlights for it, she'll be, I can talk her into that one, but it, it's missing a lot of the chrome and stuff off the front end. We'll, we'll see. I'll probably have to sell it a little bit cheaper. Then I've got this old jail bar Ford. I'm sure she'll want that nose. And what else we got back here? We got yeah these two Fords. I'm sure she'll want that Ford there. The one on the back of it, I think she'll probably want it. And then the old five window truck, I sold the cab off of it. And the nose is missing a hood, but I brought a hood with me. It's the wrong color, but at least it's a hood so I'm going to put it on there see what it looks like if it looks halfway decent I'll try to talk her into that one as well and then last but not least out here in the field all lonely I've got this old truck here I think it's a 51 or two that's got a pretty good nose on it for a wall hanger it's got that one fender crunched in like that I'll have to beat that out but other than that I think she'll want that one well, I took a ton of pictures and I had a bunch of people interested in other stuff I had somebody interested in this truck those stub nose Chevys that I have I forget what else I had a bunch of people all that Opal GT up front. I had a bunch of cars out here people were interested in and I've been meaning to send pictures and I've just been so busy I keep forgetting every time I'm out here. But I took about 300 pictures and sent them out to everybody so if you're waiting on pictures from me and you didn't get pictures please remind me. When I was out here though there's a whole bunch of quail. I mean I'm talking a bunch of quail over there in the trees. When I used to come out here and get cars out of here back before we, I bought the place 
And there was a bunch of cars out here that my dad bought out back. And when I came out here to get those, there was tons of quail then, but I haven't seen them since. So I thought maybe they were gone for good, but that makes me feel good to see them again. And bunches of rabbits out here too. It's been pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this car unloaded. I'm hoping it'll just roll off the trailer. That's what I'm kind of hoping. We'll see what happens. I'm going to undo everything, then tilt the trailer up in the air, and hopefully it'll dump off the back. It's got one flat tire on it. Uh, I don't know what'll happen there. I guess we'll find out. I thought I had the car sold, and I was just going to leave it on. That way I could deliver it to the guy. But he decided he doesn't need another one. He's already got three. So he decided he doesn't want it. So it looks like it's going to go ahead and get chopped up. I'm not sure yet what's going to happen there. But no matter what happens, I need to get it off my trailer. That way I can use the trailer later this week, maybe. Perfect. That couldn't have gone any better. Everything came off easy. Rolled right off of there. It's got flat tire on the other side as well. And that didn't hinder it up at all. So that was pretty cool. I wish they all worked that easy. I know some of you guys get tired of me talking about the weather. But this actually has a direct effect on the vlog. My camera is overheating. It's March 2nd and my camera is overheating. That is unreal. It's not overheated yet, but it's dimmed the screen and it's starting to shut down some of the functions on it. My other phone is completely dead because it overheated and the, the battery went dead, but it's getting kind of old anyway. It's two and a half years old. I really need to replace it. But yeah, this time of year, especially getting into the hot weather, when it gets really hot outside, it's really hard to film because everything dies so quick. I'm really hoping to get an actual camera this year. I don't know if it'll happen or not. I've got to be careful with my budget. Don't want to spend too much. I just bought that metal detector. I've spent quite a bit on that bus back there already buying different things for it. So I just got to be a little bit careful. But if things go good, maybe later in the year I'll get an actual camera. All right, my buyer just messaged me back. And she picked out nine noses that she wants. I sent her a bunch of them. And she picked out nine of them that she wants. So we'll for sure get those nine noses cut off. And then we'll probably go ahead and cut off some more because there's some that are really cool, I think. And I think once she sees them in person, she'll want them anyway. And if not, we'll find somebody else that wants to buy them. That's going to be for next week, though. Today's only Wednesday of this week, so we got quite a ways before we start chopping. Check out that massive machine. The guy that rents this place from me out here, he's going to sandblast it and paint that. That thing is just absolutely huge. It's its own trailer. It looks like it's almost too tall to go down the road, but they drove it in like that. I came in here in the building to get out of the sun so I could get on my phone. Look what I found laying up here. I just happened to look up here. Saw that. There's a big old spider hiding in there. Somewhere in that mess. But this here's pretty cool. Check that out. It's an old steering wheel mounted fan. That's what that is. That's pretty cool. And then I found this in the scrap as well. I had to run the numbers on it to know what it was. I wasn't entirely sure. But what this is for is for a 65 to 69 I think. Uh, Mustang and Cougar 289 or 302 engine. This is the bell housing off the C4 automatic. It may fit some of the 70s stuff as well. I'm not sure. I know it's for the 157 tooth flywheel. So whenever they switched over to the, the next size up of flywheel, this one won't work anymore. I'm not sure what year that was exactly. But still, that's pretty cool find. It's in pretty good shape. Just needs cleaned up. There's no cracks in it, no breaks, nothing like that. Well, guys, with that, I think I'm going to head out for the day. It's pretty warm out and I ran out of water, so I'm about to die of thirst, so I'm going to head home. It looks like tomorrow I'm going to be starting on another cleanup, so I'm not sure what's there yet. I mean, I know what's there, but I don't know what goes and what doesn't go for sure, so I'm going to go out there with my dad for the first trip, and then after that, I'll work on cleaning it up. And while I'm cleaning it up, he'll have the opportunity to go organize his place a little bit better, because he's been so busy hauling stuff all the time that he hasn't had time to crush any cars. So we'll kind of switch roles, and I'll stop crushing and start hauling, and he'll start crushing and stop hauling. I don't know what all will get done tomorrow, I'm not even sure what time we'll start, but that's just a whole nother video, we'll worry about that then. If you guys enjoyed this one, please give me a thumbs up, let me know what your favorite part of the video was, stay tuned, we got lots of stuff coming up over the next few weeks. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.